Hello and welcome, it's Chris from Christopher Hold Training and welcome to episode 33. Today's topic is a little bit about my story and in particular why I help people with back injuries. It's a very personal subject for me and I'm going to talk to you more about that um, over the next few minutes. Uh, before I get into that I'll just quickly mention uh, my website is ChristopherHold.com and ChristopherHoldTraining.com so please do come along there. Um, have a look around ChristopherHold.com. I have the blog, share lots of information, Christopher Hold Training. I have my online programs which you can obviously get involved in, mainly focused around back injuries. And uh, also there are social media, you can come to Facebook, Christopher Hold Training, Twitter, at Christopher Hold. So please do come along there, like and follow. It'd be great to have you there. So coming back to uh, sort of my story and how I came to working with people with 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 back injuries well if we go right back to the start it goes back to my first of all my love of sport um, so that started at age six started playing football at primary school and then eventually it went into cricket and rugby so that's that's what got me physically active so in some ways that's where it started then when I was 14 I started working in a local pub and I was just washing dishes but what that turned into is then um, what what was known as sticking up skittles. So if you know temping bowling, it's very similar. It's a little bit more rough around the edges because we're in a, in a country pub. There's only one lane. And instead of the machinery clearing and picking and replacing up the pins, that was my job. So 14 years old, you've got you know, 10, 15, 20 people up the other end throwing these big rubber or wooden balls down and bouncing all over the place so it, was, it can get quite um, sketchy at times but we're there, we clear the, the pins that have fallen down, we pick up the other ones so we might be bending over, uh, bending down, picking up, uh, I don't know, a, a hundred times in a night, probably minimum. This would go on for three or four hours. So I was there sort of bending down, picking up, sitting back on my seat, the next ball would come down bending down, clearing, picking up, so on and so forth. So that that started happening, you know, 14, 15 years old. Then one night um, I was sticking up Skittles and all of a sudden, I can remember it like it was yesterday, I went down to pick up my first, not necessarily the first one of the night, but the first one of, the, of, of when they'd just been knocked down and all of a sudden, bang, my back goes into spasm. And I'm sort of hunched over and I'm too afraid to say anything because you know they're all adults, they're all drinking, they're quite rowdy, so I don't say anything. I'm just hunched over on my seat and slowly I'm picking up pins, replacing them, I'm leaning on my own knee, I'm putting my hand down to, to hold myself up because I'm literally my back can't hold me up. Um, so I'm hunched over and I'm in pain and at the time, not that I don't, you don't you know, you, you don't think anything of it at the time. Obviously, you've got the pain, but you don't know what it is. You don't know how long it's going to last. But generally, it would last a couple of days, and then it would settle. So that started happening at about the age of sort of 14, 15, where it started getting a bit worse and a bit worse. This then began uh, to happen more regularly. So throughout my sort of mid to late teens, it was starting to happen, and it was just things like picking up a pen off the floor, or if I got up off the off the sofa awkwardly, or something like that. It was just really random things that would just set my back off. What it then started doing is it then started interfering with the sport that I was playing. So it was then starting to become, let's just say, a problem. Before that, it was just something that happened, but when it started interfering with sport, then it started to become a problem. I started to think about it a little, a little bit more. What then started happening, as I got into my sort of 20s, it started to reduce, and I'm assuming this is something to do with um, like growth slowing down, but what I always had is I always had back pain and the back spasms would come back every now and again. It wasn't as regular, but they would come back, but I always had back pain. I had back pain sometimes standing up, sitting down, you know, all of that sort of stuff. I became a bit of a fidget when I was in a seat and so on and so forth. So this is all sort of happening in the background whilst I'm still playing sport and sort of, you know, to some degree learning about it through my um, late teens as I go into sort of, or through school and college, so I'm still learning about it. Um, but it was always very much 
I wanted to go into sort of health, fitness and sport. That was always my direction where I wanted to go with, with regards to my vocation. So what I did is I qualified as a personal trainer in 2008. So this was when I was 25. And um, the, it wasn't necessarily to become, you know, to improve my back pain or anything like that. It was just I wanted to work in health, fitness and sport. So, so yes, I qualified in 2008 when I was 25. But what was starting to happen in the classroom when I got eventually into the gyms and with my clients is back pain would come up in discussions. Clients would have it, obviously I had it as well. So what then started to happen is that then really started to drive my learning. So people would come to me with a bad back, they would express their symptoms, let me know what they are, where the pain was, what they've been doing, so on and so forth. And I would then just go on just go in and find out about it. Obviously, I was learning about my own back pain at the time as well, so I was being able to find common threads and see where the where the patterns were in myself and in the people that I was working with. And what then started happening is, obviously then, as I'm learning it, I'm starting to apply it. So I'm starting to apply it mainly to myself and slowly to the clients that had it that, um, that were expressing similar sort of symptoms. It was never, it was never, um, I wouldn't apply it to myself. I would always apply it to myself first and then I would move it into, um, into my clients or the realm of my clients. So I began learning it, I began applying it. What I used as my gauge was just everyday life. So obviously I had, when I was 14, back spasms quite regularly through my late or early, uh, mid to late teens. When I got into my 20s, it started slowing down and reducing, but I still had the back spasms. But what started happening as I started applying what I was learning is the back spasms stopped. Now, it wasn't a conscious thing of, you know, I know they've stopped, they just stopped happening. And I then, sort of over a period of years, you sort of realise, well, okay, they must have stopped then. So I sort of found out that what I was doing was working. Obviously, as I'm drip feeding that then into my clients, that, that information that I'm learning, I'm beginning to get feedback from them. Okay, it's working. I'm starting to move them forward. I'm starting to find out what works and what doesn't work. Then it came to, so on my sort of personal experience, it then came down to the back pain from sitting. So I could I could drive for, uh, you know, for a couple of hours and I would have to stop two or three times in a couple of hours because my back was hurting, because I couldn't sit in the seat and drive. Even if I was a passenger, I was fidgeting around and I had to move around. If I go to the cinema, I might be sat down for an hour and a half, two hours. I couldn't sit still because my back would start aggravating me. But what started happening again, uh, I think this was this was definitely when I'd hit 30, so after five years, the, the back pain of sitting in the car had basically stopped. I could drive for a couple of hours. I could drive from Bristol to Birmingham, which is about a two hour drive, hour and a half to two hour drive, and I could do it without stopping. I couldn't do that before. So I'm, I'm using that as feedback. Okay, so my back spasms are reducing and, and to some degree they've stopped. I've, I've, you know, I'm 35 now. I've not had them um, since. So I'm then able to sit in a uh, car or in a seat still for a prolonged period of time, albeit one hour, two hours, three hours. And again, I'm not getting the back pain. So what I then started to find is that was all reducing. And obviously now the back pain has stopped. If I do something stupid or if I do something without thinking, it lets me know. My, it just gives me a little twinge. It gives me a little ache, a little pain. And I hold my hands up, right? Yeah, that was silly. Focus on what you're trying to... Um, uh, uh, achieve, be it lift a weight, be it move boxes, whatever it might be. And it's very much now I don't really have back pain. If I'm out on my bike for a long time and I'm cycling up hills and it's quite an intense session, then yes, my back starts to hurt. But it's not anything that's, again, it's not interfering with my sport, which is what it was doing in my late teens. So what 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 was happening through all of that time is I got qualified as an exercise for low back pain specialist. So that happened in 2011. So I qualified as a trainer in 2008. I qualified as a back pain specialist in 2011. Um, obviously, I was taking my own experiences with my back pain. Is that reducing? Is 
is what I'm doing working? Is the information that I'm learning and applying working? So I took and used it within my own experiences. I got qualified. I learned from the best doctors, professors, and therapists in the world, most notably uh, Dr. McGill, which I've had the opportunity to, to sit down and interview sort of three or four times on back pain, core strength, and performance training, which is basically everything that I got into this for. Um, and I've also began applying it to clients, and now I've helped people overcome sciatica that they've had for, you know, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and, you know, within 8 to 12 weeks. And that's not to say that's the way it was sold. I, know I've, I've, I will never go up to anyone and say, I can get rid of your back pain in 12 weeks. I can, you know, eliminate your sciatica in four weeks or anything like that. I set them on a program, and then it, it very much depends on how they um, sort of own the program and take on the information. That's the real... Um, gauge of success of the program is how they take to it. I get some people they 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 think they need um, something else, so they don't buy into what I'm teaching them, and they don't overcome the back pain. But the people that buy into what I'm talking about, yes, I've t I've helped sciatica. I've helped people overcome back spasms. I've helped people rehabilitate after disc bulges and disc herniations and poor posture like um, lordosis and all those types of back injuries that you might find. S uh, spinal stenosis is another one. That's not necessarily curing or eliminating it, but that's helping people manage it and become stronger with that condition. So the, with with everything that I'm teaching, I know the, the information is solid because I've learned from the best. I've applied it on myself. I've applied it on the many people that I've worked with, be it you know a, over a thousand different personal trainers when I was teaching, or the hundreds of people that I've worked with on a on a sort of a daily and a weekly basis as a trainer, so I know the information works. And as I became busier from all the face-to-face -face work that I was doing, and people were contacting me through the internet because um, obviously my YouTube channel has got a, d a degree of, um, of of a of a small following, so people were contacting me. How you know? I've, I've, these are my problems. Can you see my MRI scans? Can you see my X-rays? Blah 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 blah. So I'm getting all this information. So I'm thinking, well, how can I help these people? So what I began doing is providing an online solution or an online. Um, I'll call it a program, but it's not just an exercise program. It's it's a, it's a consolidation of what I teach people in the gym. So it's not just here are the exercises. It's an education. It's talking about how to lift. It's talking about how to carry. It's talking and helping people learn about their anatomy. These are the muscles that are involved. These are the um, these are the muscles and the tissues that you want to be thinking about. These are the um, the things in everyday life that you want to be focusing on. These are the postures you want to be finding yourself in when you are seated and how you can minimise pressure on the lower back. So it's not just me saying here's three exercises, go and do a bunch of, you know, workouts and hold it for, you know, three lots of 10 or three lots of 30 seconds or whatever it is. It's very much, it's a it's a whole educational process because that's the journey that I've been on. If I hadn't of educated myself about my anatomy and about the the exercises and so on and so forth that I was that I was going through, then I would have just stuck to the mainstream, oh, I need to strengthen my core and do a bunch of sit-ups and crunches. I now know that, that that won't cut it. You've got to learn about your anatomy. You've got to be able to read your anatomy. You've got to be able to feel what your your anatomy is communicating to you on a daily daily basis. And that's the education process that I get people on. And that's not only with my face-to-face, but with my online programs, because in some ways they're one and the same thing, because it's that's the information that I'm teaching people anyway that's online. I've just consolidated it and put it into tutorials and um, exercise programs. So with regards to why I help people with back injuries, it's a very personal experience for me. I know what they're going through. It's, it's something that I've invested a lot of time, effort, and money into learning and also into applying because everyone does have their specific uh, needs and nuances with with the program. So I've been able to find out what the common threads through all of those are. So I've been you know I've been studying this for the last 
10 years um, at the recording of this video of course be it 2018 so I've been studying this for 10 years I've again as I mentioned I've learned from the best so the information that is now being filtered down is 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 the best information that I know of on the planet and that's what's held within my face-to-face uh, one-to-one training and also my online program uh, training as well so why I help people again it's very personal to me and I know a lot of people suffer with it they have these conditions for a long period of time some people have come to me and said I've had it for 20 years and then within a short space of time it's gone and they've lived with it for that long and it was in in some cases quite a simple solution to overcome it but because they haven't been taught the right information then they just think well that's it that I've got back pain it's stuck with me now and that's not the case and that in some ways is kind of the message that I'm trying to get to people through face to face and through online because I can't reach all the people that I want to reach face to face because there's just too many people out there so the on- online solution is obviously um, helping me expand that um, expand that vision and expand that um, that reach so that's kind of why I help people again it's not a it's not a it wasn't necessarily a business decision it was very much a, a personal experience that, that that brought me to that um, so yeah thank you for watching thank you for listening my name is Chris from Christopher Hold Training I'll speak to you in the next video